Now we're ready to go into some of the details of the radial velocity method of exoplanet detection. So let's, uh, we, we're going to assume then that we had all our assumptions uh, before and we're going to assume then, you know, there's circular orbits and there's only one exoplanet. And then we're going to look at then how to calculate the orbital radius. Now normally it's written as r, but I'm going to actually call it d. So we're going to find the orbital radius d here. Now what's the situation happening here? Well, how do we do this? All we have to do is just derive Kepler's third law. That's it. And I've shown you how to do that. But I think it's worth it to show you again just quickly, just to see how it applies here. So I'm going to do this again. So if you already know how to derive Kepler's third law, no problem, then just ignore this. But this right here, this will be the star. So we're going to call its mass M star here. And orbiting around it is going to be this unseen planet going around. So that unseen planet here, we're going to have it here. That planet's going to have a mass of the planet. It's also going to have a speed that it does when it's orbiting here, going around. And this distance from the center of the star to the planet, if we assume they stayed still, which we know they don't actually, but if we did, that'll be the distance d. Well, then all we have to do is uh, derive Kepler's third law. So we start off by writing Newton's universal law of gravitation, that the gravitational force of attraction between two objects is equal to this constant, g, times the mass of a star, times the mass of the planet, divided by their distance squared, the orbital radius. And maybe it's a good idea just for the sake of completeness, the completeness just to uh, explain what everything is very quickly. So g is just a constant at 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. m star is the star's mass. And that will be given in kilograms. We have mp, that's the planet's mass. That's also given in kilograms. We have d. That's the orbital radius of the planet. It's technically the semi-major axis, A, but we're going to call it the orbital radius here. Because remember, we made that assumption. It's not an ellipse. We're going to assume it's a circle. And we're going to measure that in uh, meters. And of course, this Fg, that's just the gravitational force of attraction between these two gravitational force and that's measured in newtons. Well of course this gravitational force inwards there's also because it's going around in a circle then there's a, cir a centripetal force. That's given normally by mv squared over r. I think it's orbiting. So in this case it's a planet so it's mp vp squared divided by the distance between them so d. This is sort of the other equation I need. Are there any things we haven't labeled? Yeah we need vp which is the orbital speed of the planet. That'll be in meters per second. It's supposed to be in M. And then of course we need FC. That's a centripetal force. Just that we've defined absolutely everything that we need. So centripetal force, that's given in Newtons. Well, we're also going to have something else, actually. We're also going to have t, which will be the orbital period of the star and the planet, and that'll be given in seconds. That'll be the time it takes to go around in one full circle, or the time it takes the star to do one full circle, because the orbital period of the star is the same as that of the planet. So we're also going to need that. Well then, let's go ahead and do what we do for Kepler's third law, which is, well, we know that this gravitational force of attraction is the thing that's giving this centripetal force. So because of that, we can set the two equal to each other. So we set Fg equals to Fc. And away we go. So we have G m star mp over d squared equals m of the planet times v of the planet squared over d. Well, the masses of the planets cancel out. That's nice. And what do we have then? Well, then we can actually try to get maybe this D over there. So we'll try to sort of move this D over. If I do that, this D right here will cancel out the D squared. So we'll end up with G M star over D. That's going to be VP squared. 
But, I mean, we're not quite done yet. Uh, Kepler's third law relates the orbital period of a planet with its orbital radius. So that's what Kepler's third law actually does. It actually says in this case that d cubed is proportional to um, t squared. That's really Kepler's third law. So we're actually going to do it, but in more detail, right? We're going to do like what we've done before and go into the details and find out not just what it's proportional to, but what it equals. There's a number here that goes in front. We're going to figure all that out right here. So, but uh, because it's going around in a circle, well, uh, v is a distance over time. And because it goes around in a circle when it does its orbit, uh, going all the way around in one circle, that's going around 2 times pi times the radius. So in this case, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, but we call the radius d. And the time it takes to go around, that's the period. So because of that, then we have, well, we'll label it vp here. Then we can say, well, vp squared equals all this stuff, so then I'm going to then just put that in here. So instead of vp, I'm going to put in 2 pi d over t, and I'm going to square that. Maybe I'll set it to the left here, so I'll say... Um, yeah, I'll do it that way. So I'll say um, 2 pi d over t. That's my v, and I square it. That's going to be g m over d. Or I have just an equation. Remember, you can put the left side equals the right, or the right equals the left. So I just wrote down this thing first. This is v squared. And because of that, then I can just work this out. So 2 squared is 4. Pi squared is just pi squared. This is just d squared, and t squared is just t squared. All that equals g m star over d. Well, maybe I want to move my d up here. So I'm going to say d cubed is going to be up here. I'm going to move my t squared over to the right. Remember, using algebra rules, when we move something, it's because we multiply or divide by something that is convenient. In this case, I want to get rid of the d on the bottom, so I multiply the top and the bottom by d. Gets rid of the d here and puts it over here. So because of that, I'm going to have 4 pi d cubed, because this d multiplies that one. That's going to equal g m star times t squared. I'm going a little bit fast with the algebra, but if you have problems with this, uh, just take your time with it. Take your time with your rules of algebra, and you should be able to get from here to here. Well, then what I want to do is get d cubed on its own. So d cubed by itself is going to be, well, g m star times t squared, and I have to divide both sides by 4 pi squared. Whoops, I forgot the squared here. It's going to be divided by 4 pi squared. Turns out this is everything I needed. Let's look carefully at what we've just done. We've actually rederived Kepler's third law, which says whoops, that the d cubed is proportional to t squared. In fact, we just found that d cubed is not just proportional, it's equal to g m star over 4 pi squared t squared. So that's exactly what it's equal to. See, we just got to that. And it turns out that is all you needed. Because look at this then. Uh, maybe I'll just put this in sort of bigger notes. Maybe we'll put some stars around it or something just to tell us. This is all we need. Whoops, I have to be careful here not to sort of erase things. But this is all I needed here. That this, this is the equation I need. So what does this tell me then? Well, this tells me that as long as I know, as long as I know the mass of a star, which I can infer from the luminosity of the star, um, as long as I know the period, then I can find the orbital radius. So that is really, really powerful. This is all we need to do in order to deal with um, the orbital radius. So that means, again, that as long as I know the orbital period, so how long it takes to go around, and I know the mass of a star, turns out I can then calculate just d, which means although there's a lot of extra information, we didn't actually need that much of it. All we needed to do is know the mass of the star and the period. That's it. Just from that, we can find out the orbital radius of the planet.